She has more than three decades of experience with agency, marketer, media, organizations, and in, in and around South, Southeast Asia, London, and Asia Pacific. Now, over more than 11 years of experience, and she's right in front of me. She looks very beautiful. And if you're all set, please put your hands together for Ms. Divya Karani, CEO, South Asia Media, Densu. On stage, I'll request her to come. So in the past 11 years, she has led Densu Media to become number one agency. Rekma, February, February 2021, scaling up business on a market-beating trajectory year on year. Please put your hands together. for. Thank you so much, Ram, for being here. I'll hand it over to you. They are all yours. Chandru, applause, applause, applause. All that I had just wanted to share, you have already addressed. And as a live example. So there it is, complete acknowledgement. Thank you. Thank you. So, building pa powerful brand stories. I'll begin with saying thank you. All of you all are here this morning. I'd like to share an actual anecdote of what happened a couple of years ago. Early in the morning, 8 a.m.-ish, I was in office, and in into my room stormed this colleague of mine. His name was Dev. I saw you coming into office. So I said, yes, I'm here. You were driving. So I said, yes, I do that. You were talking. So I said, yes, I do that as well. I am right now. But you were alone. So I said, yes, I do that as well. Now, what did I just do? I shared a true story which actually played itself out some years ago. And what did it tell you? It told you I'm an early morning person. It told you about the fact that I drive, self-drive myself to office. It did perhaps tell you a little more than my name and my designation. It told you that I am a little idiocentric and I have the ability to laugh at myself. Right? Perhaps this, therefore, will stick a little more than just the name and the designation. Even after you've gone home, you may remember it and say, Zako. But there it is. Brands are living beings. They do very much the same. And your conversation, where despite all the pressure, you stayed the course, is when I wanted to applaud and applaud. Stories sell. Powerful stories make brands. They create value, intangible and tangible value. Uh, the classic example that comes to my mind is Swiss watches. And look at it. Despite the ubiquitous mobiles, they are what they are. The fact is, behind many, many, in fact, almost all successful brands are the stories that are attached to each one of them. The second bit is, we all know brands are built over a time. One campaign, one com in one year is just one piece which joins the whole dot of a connected experience that consumers interact and get from the brand, sometimes it adds to their equity, sometimes, unfortunately, it also detracts. The third bit is, as brand custodians, we know that brand narratives are not linear. There is no beginning, middle, or an end. It is a continuous dialogue that the brand stakeholders have with their consumers. And this is a continuously evolving dialogue that brand stakeholders need to listen to. 
it is between two communities. And because it is between two communities, it is not an output of marketing. It is actually an outcome. And that innate realization in itself is profound. And I find, having worked with multiple marketeers, that sometimes the cleverest of them perhaps at times forget it. And, and when we talk about customers, you spoke about it, Chandru. Customers, internal constituents, external constituents, future constituents, and all the other B2B related constituents as well. We spoke about two communities. Like every story, there are two sides to it. And that, I've touched upon it briefly earlier, it needs to be constantly listened to, understood, so that you can have a meaningful relationship. What is the, and it's so, so sad, if I were to stand here, and which is what I'm doing right now, and continue to have one monologue, irrespective of the fact that you all are interested, you all are scrolling through your mobile, or God knows what. How sad would that be? And then brand stories stick only and only when substantiated. And today there is no place to hide. You are what you are, and it's there for everybody to see. It requires attention to both the narratives, because sometimes unwittingly, what you say perhaps may get construed otherwise, or an action you done, and you may not have thought about it, right? And we've all heard about trust and how every drop is, you know, gathered and then it goes out. And therefore, it needs to be, there needs to be an honest, transparent relationship. Any mistake, and we've had some clients do that, Mia Kalpa. And that in itself is respected. The last one is then an acknowledgement of the times we are living in. And without a shadow of doubt, the last two years has changed everything that we know. It's changed us as people. It's changed us as people. It's changed the way we work, the way we live, our values and our priorities. And therefore, our accountability to each other as well. No time for fluff, no time for packaging. Say it as is. Give it to me, and if it is of interest to me, I will step forward, period. We today live in the age of an empowered consumer, and this should not come as a surprise. We all, as practitioners, do what we do with this in context. A study done some 10 years ago where there were two-thirds of our touch points were all brand-driven. Advertising, direct marketing, promo, in-store, etc., etc. The same study done today has two-thirds of touch points which are consumer-driven. And think about it. We even therefore then deploy and employ influencers to talk the consumer speak. Just in case perhaps they may not be able to hear, or more importantly, they may not believe us as much. That is because there is a fundamental shift that has happened from a brand-led world where our consumers in very many ways were captive audience sitting ducks to the, you know, the, to the uh, monologue that marketeers stood and gave them. And all of them were mar marching to a marketeer's agenda. It's now moved to a consumer-led world where it is with your permission, it is experience, brand experience is the most important. Forget of what you say, 
it is what you do and what they experience you as, right? And it is driving the consumer's agenda, understanding the consumer, understanding their needs, understanding their motivation, and meeting them. And therefore, all of us who have practiced for years, it is moving from changing consumer behavior to now changing brand behavior. And I saw that again, Chandru, in your journey, right? You've actually said, hey, and, and then there's another one. Very interestingly, you said, we were putting out a brand story. Three years later, we discovered that that brand story was not sticking. And then you discovered why. The fact is, this fundamental shift that is happening, that luxury of three years or perhaps even three months may not be there with us anymore. The key challenges for, mar challenges for marketeers are very, very many, and it's an unenviable position to be in currently. There is increasing competition, new startup, the, the category morphing, the category disappearing, or new ones getting created. There is an, alongside that, there's an increasing intolerance of being lectured to. So it's not advertising that engages that they are rebelling against. They are protesting loud and clearly to be given a bhashan. Thank you, thank you, right? And then there is that information overload that is, it's like a barrage. Think about it. They have so many options. So what are consumers doing? Consumers are doing what they do. They are exercising their right to blank you out. And therefore, unless and until it is with each one of you in the room, with your permission, I'm speaking to you, perhaps it is something that you want to listen to, or perhaps you zoom me out, and that's also fine. You guys are the consumers right now. And therefore, with that context, an appreciation of our world of communication where there is complexity and contradictions abound. So some marketeers will go after brand and swear that brand is the only way to go. Whereas others may do, espouse that, but actually are performance, performance, performance. Others delve deep into data. Whereas on the other side, there is this huge belief, and I can't say it's wrong, that creativity is actually the multiplier. Data can aid and abet, but it is creativity, that idea, that is center stage. And then there are all the physical experiences that brands want to impart. And some brands, you notice, have skipped that rung and straight away into virtual worlds, metaverses, and so on. And it, they, some of them are quite successful at that. And then some, uniquely, you'll find, are very much there in the physical space and have stepped into the virtual. Or some who are in the virtual, and this is where I laugh, some who are in the virtual have now step, stepped into the physical space. Think about it, and I am challenging each and every one in this room. It is we practitioners who are guilty. We are guilty of actually putting our craft in silos. The consumer does not really distinguish between the physical and the virtual world anymore. They are very quick and they seamlessly glide from one to the other. It is we practitioners who've decided offline, online, somewhere, some, and I hate the word, Somebody says traditional media. Really? Really? Talk to me. What is traditional media? So the moment in any conference room, I hear offline and online and traditional media, you earn no brownie points from me, definitely. My team knows this. It is actually, we are, as communicators, need to be media agnostic, respect each media for what intrinsic value it brings to the table, and build that seamless experience. Some clients listen to us, 
Some don't, but sooner or later they do. And then there are some who go for the long term, but as I said, the pressure is enormous. So you can only, if you survive today, can you live for tomorrow? So there is that very, very real pressure that they are under. And then there is, you, you aim for growth, and then sometimes you genuinely aim for good, or sometimes you try to straddle both, or sometimes you only espouse good. But that is a very, very short-term strat. Huge implications of boomeranging. So there is huge contradiction that coexists. What do we do? We convert all these challenges into opportunities. And again, this is another war cry for me. As practitioners of this craft, there has never, ever been a more exciting time than today. I have been in this for the past over three decades. And I will tell you, as much as what we did and thought through, and we did our craft, and we practiced it bloody well even three decades ago. But there were only those many avenues, and like it or not, it was a monologue. Today, it is so exciting because there, as adults, and how many of us here in this room are parents? Put up your hand, please. So the large number. And if you all are parents, what happened? You spoke to your two-year-old. You spoke in their language, right? Before you know it, we all lapsed into baby language. You don't know it, but your vocab changes. Your tone changes, right? In trying to communicate with them. And then you speak to them, and then they grow, and then you speak with them, right? That is what and where we are right now. And how fruitful is it, is it where you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your child? It's beautiful. So as much as you loved them when they were young, but now that they are talking to you, and I have a 25-year-old, at times I don't know who's the mother and who's the daughter, because I get lectured too as well, and I can see smiles, but anyone with a teenage child will uh, smile as well, because there it is. So that is where we are. We need to enjoy, we need to convert all these challenges into an opportunity, because it's priceless. So coming back to our brand stories. So building powerful brand stories, it needs to be true, it needs to be authentic, it needs to be inside out. Understanding consumers in depth, it's not just demographics are long passe, it's perhaps one of the variables, because there are many things where women and men differ, so you may have that as one of the variables still, right? But it is understanding consumers' needs, their motivation, meeting their needs even sometimes before they feel the need. If, if I'm making sense to any one of you all, right? Or almost creating needs for them. How, how beautiful is that thought, okay? And doing it with brand, content, commerce, all brought together in one cohesive experience. At Densu, what do we do? We pride ourselves, we are a network which actually Rather than just default, we design for what's next. So we address today, and we look at, very, very, very simply put, at the horizon on what's next. We don't 10 out of 10 get it right always, but with our marketeers, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10 is a good enough thing. Because we are, because of this, getting better and better. We are getting better and braver. And this is another war cry to all of you all in the room. We all need to step forward. We can't hide. We can't just be followers. Step forward, get better at recognizing what is on the horizon, be brave enough to commit yourself, and believe in yourself. Chances are you'll get it right. And when you don't, 
that in itself is a learning. And what do we do then with that learning? We convert that into yet another opportunity. How do we do this in a structured, coherent way? Because every brand story differs. We do this with full acknowledgement that brands have, are living beings which actually have to be experienced. And in that, with the consumer at the center, content, commerce, experience, and the brand have to be meshed together. And as an agency, communication agency, we are the multiplier for all our marketeers and our brands. We bring this together where every media encounter is a favorable experience. Needless to say, embedded in that statement is there is an engagement that we are effecting. Right? With the most advanced technology, and I'll give you an uh, example, understanding people which sit in the center, because if you do not have that innate understanding, all this comes to naught. And then you connect the brand with the content, with commerce, with culture, all together. I'm going to share two powerful brand stories right now. I've handpicked two out of a repository. Take a look at it. Each work speaks for itself. The first one actually meshes brand, content, commerce, and experience. And when you see the piece of work, you will see all this play out and come to life. Uh. Uh. Instagram have come out with the best feature audio messages. So the big daddy of internet challenges is here. It's called Swiggy's Voice of Hunger Challenge. The Voice of Hunger. If you can get the waveform on Instagram DM to look like a food item. This kind of looks like a nacho, right? One kebab, two kebab, three kebab, four kebab. You have to DM them if you like them. To win a year's worth of food vouchers from Swiggy. Free food tastes better. Better. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, ah, ah. यार आप लोगों ने देखा क्या हैशटैग स्विगी वॉइस ऑफ हंगर चैलेंज ताबड़ तोड़ यार दे वर मल्टीपल एंट्रीज दे वर एंट्रीज ऑन प्रेशर कुकर्स ऑन विसल्स ऑन कैट्स एंड सो ऑन अकॉर्डिंग टू द ब्रांड दे हैव बीन रिसीविंग एन एवरेज ऑफ ओवर 50 डीएम्स पर मिनट सो स्विगी एविडेंटली हिट 10,000 entries on day one, and I think that soon became 20,000, 30,000, and 150,000. Wow. Consumers, you've got them to be part of the story. They are enacting the brand for you. And it has all the brand values embedded within that story. The next example is equally powerful. What it does is it brings together powerful storytelling, it harnesses tech, and it brings about societal change. Take a look. And some of you may have seen this. I don't know. How many have? Unfiltered history. 
Okay, a couple of hands are going up and I can see some of my team members as well. So there it is. The British Museum is a public institution dedicated to human history, art and culture. Come discover over 80,000 works from around the world here in London. You are now viewing the Greagle Shield. Captain James Cook was a British event. We're now looking at the Greagle Shield, which was taken from my people. Collections in the British museums are premised on a simple idea. I'm proud of what my grandfather stole from yours. The Rosetta Stone was not the discovery neither of the French, neither of the British. It was already discovered and reused in Egypt multiple times. For us, it's not just a well-carved rock. It is a living ancestor. This very important statue is on display in a museum thousands of miles away. Say the British Museum is the world's largest receiver of stolen goods. We're launching an interactive tour of some of its most contested artifacts. There is always a story behind every object that was made in the kingdom, and that is how we told our history. There were two foreign powers in rivalry over Egypt. One of them won over the other, and they took the worst points of the other. I feel I've received a balanced narrative. For many Assyrians, it was maybe the last time we could really stand up to people who were trying to bully us. We sort of went around the world and took what we wanted, and it's, it makes me feel a deep level of shame. Museums around Europe are slowly realizing that exhibiting items taken by force hundreds of years ago from other countries is kind of gross. And it's about time. We can't change the past, but we can change how we engage with it in the present. This was a two-minute clip in the day and age of 30 seconds, or forget 30 seconds, Three seconds, you have a two minute clip. This one, when something is so clear, it cuts through jury after jury after jury. I was part of the Cannes jury this year. And let me tell you, the, when we come and we gather together and we are across the geographies, the jurors, across networks, but cream that, like they say, the old saying, always floats to the top. This unequivocal communication, which is clear in its design and thought and articulation, always comes to the top. And when I say this piece one, jury after jury, this doesn't even capture. I've just given the great finale, right? There is another piece that I haven't got here, paucity of time, that was actually a seven minute video. It was Puja Didi, and it was not this year, but last year. I don't know how many in this room have seen Puja Didi. It was done for Facebook. Go back and take a look. Seven minutes. And you will, that in very many ways also encapsulates the power of stories. That powerful stories move. They move consumers, they move Business, they move brands. And therefore, we at Denso practice what we call horizontal creativity. And what is horizontal creativity? It is taking into account the consumer experience, which is actually now enacted live in the media space and bringing it together in the brand world. Right? It, it, it's a philosophy. It's, it's something that we craft, that we practice, where this creativity permeates across the rank and file, across the functions. And it goes back to, uh, to uh, a threat of mine that I have always given my creative uh, champions. I would often tell them, because media is full of numbers, right? I would often threaten them. You guys go to sleep in a media presentation. Be careful. I will start writing copy.
that kept them awake. But today, and in a recent symposium I attended, I asked the audience, because this was a question from the audience, where does media begin and creativity end? Or where does creative begin and media end? Like I said, we practitioners perhaps are guilty of putting it in silos. So this is a call to arm. This is a call to arm for everybody in this room. We need to be creative. We need to be strong, powerful brand storytellers, including your own. One life. So with that, thank you. My call to arm I have already spoken about. Please embrace change. Do not be a laggard. Be better at identifying what that change is. Step forward bravely. Almost ensure there's a constant state of disruption. Rather that than be disrupted. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. And so gracefully, you have decoded every mantra of marketing. I hope they have got it. They will get it. If not, <laughs> at least, at least my idiosyncrasies will. So there it is. Please put your hands together for her. It was very insightful, and I'm still in the story. A lovely storyteller, you are, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I request your friend, your dear friend Chandru sir, to come up on stage and. Thank you. Please bring the memento. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.